Today on The Hookup, we're gonna do a head-to-head -head showdown pitting three of the most popular wired security camera systems with AI person and vehicle detection against each other. I'll give you an in-depth look at the Unify Protect system, Reolink's RLK8 NVR, and Blue Iris with DeepStack AI. And we'll figure out if paying five times the price for the Unify system gives you five times the performance. It doesn't. Current security camera tech is absolutely crazy compared to 10 years ago. Not only has the resolution, sharpness, and light sensitivity increased dramatically, but even more importantly, we now have affordable on-device computer vision that can do AI person and vehicle detection to drastically reduce false motion alerts. A security camera light experience is now available with battery-powered Wi-Fi cameras from companies like Eufy and Ring, but for real security applications, there's still no replacement for wired security cameras recording 24-7. Today, we're going to compare three of the most popular wired camera solutions and hopefully figure out which one best fits your use case. These three systems can vary significantly in price depending on your desired camera resolution and number of cameras, but to standardize the prices, I'm going to build out each system for four 4K resolution cameras and a two terabyte hard drive to record to. The least expensive camera system in today's video is the Reolink RLK 810B4A package that gets you a standalone network video recorder or NVR with a pre-installed two terabyte hard drive and four RLC 810A 4K bullet cameras. The NVR itself provides power over Ethernet for each camera, so you won't need to run additional power cables or purchase a PoE switch. The Reolink package has an MSRP of $559, but it can be frequently found on sale for less than $475. The next system is a bit more difficult to put a total price on because there's so many different ways to build out the system. Blue Iris is a software that runs on Windows computers. So if you already have a 6th generation Intel system or higher, you might be able to just run Blue Iris on that. But for the purpose of this video, I'm going to assume that we're going to be building everything fresh. I run my Blue Iris server on a 6th generation i7 Dell Optiplex. Mine happen to be a hand-me-down from a friend, but they can be found on eBay for around $350 with Windows 10 pre-installed. When selecting a system to run Blue Iris, you shouldn't get any processor that's older than Intel's Skylake series, which is sometimes called 6th generation and has model numbers like 6700 and 6700K. The reason for that is that Skylake was the first Intel chip to support hardware accelerated decoding of the H.265 codec, which basically means that you can run a lot more 4K cameras without maxing out your processor. 8 gigs of RAM is fine, but 16 is better, and if you can find something with a solid state main hard drive, you should go for it, since you're going to want to buy a separate hard drive for your camera footage anyways. Speaking of, I'm going to add another $60 to this budget for a 2 terabyte surveillance grade hard drive to match the real link specs, and a license for Blue Iris, which costs $69. So for the NVR portion of this build, we're looking at $479 before we add any cameras. However, adding cameras is definitely the strong point of this build. We can add almost any camera that we want, since Blue Iris can take any OnVIF compliant camera. Unlike the Reolink NVR that requires Reolink cameras or the Unify Protect system that uses only Unify cameras, we can get the exact cameras that we need for each spot in our setup. For comparison purposes, I'm going to say that we're going to use four of Enki's C800 4K cameras, which cost about $75 each. You'll also need a power over Ethernet switch to get data and power to those cameras, so throw in an 8-port switch for $59, and we're at $838, not including Ethernet cables. If you think that seems like a lot, stay tuned. The Unify Protect system can run on either a standalone UNVR, the CloudKey Gen 2 Plus, or a Unify Dream Machine Pro. The Dream Machine Pro is probably the most common way that people are going to use Unify Protect because it also doubles as your network controller, router, firewall, and an 8-port non-POE switch. The Dream Machine Pro will run you $379 without a hard drive, so we'll add the same $60 surveillance grade drive as before, and we're up to $439 for the NVR portion of this build. Next are the cameras. Unify Protect only works with Unify cameras, and Unify's AI person and vehicle detection only works with their G4 series of cameras. So to get a 4K camera that fits this bill, we're going to need the Unify G4 Pro, a 4K resolution bullet camera with AI detection. Each G4 Pro is going to cost you $449, and they also need to be powered by a PoE switch. If you're going to go Unify for everything else, you should also get a Unify switch, so throw in an 8-port 150-watt switch for $199, and that brings us to a grand total of $2,434 for a 4-camera system. 
I don't think it's necessary to declare a winner in this category, but you can see that the Rio Link system is half the cost of the Blue Iris system, and Unify Protect is over five times the price. Of course, the Unify system also gets you a router and firewall and switch, and the Blue Iris system is an entire PC that you can run extra services like Home Assistant and Plex, while the Rio Link solution is just cameras. So next, let's talk about setup. The unavoidable pain of any wired camera system is getting the Ethernet cables run from a centralized location to where you want to put each camera. In this case, all the systems are the same. There's just no getting around it. If you're serious about security, your cameras need to be wired, and those wires have to get run by somebody. If this is the part that's holding you up, there are plenty of contractors out there that can be hired to install your Ethernet drops for you. Just search for low voltage wiring contractors in your area. However, once you do get those wires installed, there's still quite a bit of variability in the ease of setup of these systems. The Reolink NVR is by far the easiest. You just plug in each of the cameras to the ports on the back of the NVR, and then you connect it to your network by plugging in the ethernet cable to either your router or switch, and you power it on. If your NVR is on the same network as your phone, the Reolink app discovers it automatically and it guides you through the rest of the setup process. Next in the ease of setup category is gonna be the Unify Protect cameras. Once you've got your network set up and your cameras plugged into the correct PoE enabled ports on your switches, you can open up your Unify controller and your cameras will ask to automatically be adopted into your Unify Protect system. Easily coming in last when it comes to ease of setup is the Blue Iris NVR software. I made a whole video about a year ago showing how I set up Blue Iris cameras to get them working with DeepStack AI software, but compared to the Reolink and Unify systems, you need to be comfortable tinkering around with advanced menus and settings, and your setup is gonna be different based on the brand of camera that you use. So far, we figured out that the Reolink system has all the same features, is comparatively inexpensive, and is the easiest to set up. So the big question is, how well does it work? For this test, I set up each of the three cameras with the camera showing the exact same viewing area. I set up person and vehicle only alerts, and then I combed through 24 hours of footage for each camera, noting in my Excel file the timestamp for when a person or vehicle was detected. If a camera missed the detection, I marked a miss, and if it gave a false or late detection, I marked those as well. For the 24 hour testing period, there were a total of 178 positive motion events. The Blue Iris system came out on top, detecting over 91.5% accurately with one false motion alert and 14 events that were caught by one of the other cameras but were not recorded in Blue Iris. Next, with a respectable 86.5% accuracy, was the Unify Protect system. And out of those 178 possible events, Unify Protect had one false motion alert and 23 misses. Slightly concerning was the fact that out of those 23 misses, a significant number of them were people and not vehicles. Out of the 34 people that walked through the area in a 24 hour period, Blue Iris missed three of them, Unify Protect missed six of them, and the Real Link NVR missed nine of them. I'd love to be able to do a further analysis of why Unify Protect and Real Link missed so many specific motion events, but unlike Blue Iris, I can't go back and look at the records of those motion events that were missed. In the case of the misses for Blue Iris, I can go back and check the software for the individual detection events and determine exactly what issues the computer vision had, and then I can go back and tweak it by adding masks or changing settings for each individual camera position. In this category, Blue Iris and DeepStack come out easily on top, followed by Unify Protect, and then last in terms of AI detection reliability and accuracy was the Reolink NVR. Now that we've talked about AI detection, we need to address the elephant in the room. When considering the Reolink or Unify Protect systems, it's important to also look at camera quality, since the Reolink NVR only works with Reolink cameras and the Unify NVR only works with Unify cameras. As far as AI detection, it only applies to Reolink model numbers that end in A, while AI detection is only available on Unify's G4 series of cameras. To compare the two systems, let's look at some clips from the Unify G4 Pro and the Reolink RLC 810A. Keep in mind that the Reolink RLC A10A has an MSRP of $85 compared to the $449 of the G4 Pro. Even so, in my test, the RLC A10A consistently produced clearer and crisper images during the day than the G4 Pro. Still images had significantly better edges and contrast, and moving images had less inner frame tearing. At night, the G4 Pro is noticeably better than the Reolink RLC A10A, which had less contrast and is still experiencing the same nighttime ghosting and low frame rate issues that I noticed during my initial review of it. There's no reason to talk about the cameras when looking at Blue Iris because you can basically use any camera you want, including the RLC A10A and G4 Pro. Any camera that's listed as OnVIF compatible is gonna work with Blue Iris. 
So for camera selection and quality, Blue Iris is the clear winner followed by Reolink, which has quite a few compatible cameras at reasonable prices, and last is definitely Unify, which has a very limited selection of very expensive cameras with honestly mediocre performance. And right now, you can't even buy them if you want because they're all out of stock. Next, let's talk about the three basic use cases of security cameras. The first is live viewing, which lets you see what's happening on your property in real time. For live viewing, the Reolink NVR offers the most options. You can view your cameras in the mobile app, in the Windows app, a web browser, or by using the HDMI port on the back of the NVR to hook directly to a TV or monitor. The Unify Protect Live View can be viewed in a web browser or in the Unify Protect mobile app. Unify also sells a product called the Viewport that's $199 and gives you a way to hook a monitor directly to your Unify Protect Live View through HDMI. Blue Iris Live View is available in the Blue Iris Windows app, the browser-based UI3 interface, or the Blue Iris mobile app, which does cost an additional $10 on top of the $69 Windows software. I've heard some reports of the Reolink system lagging behind in the Live View, so I ran a test where I kept the Live View of each camera open for 24 hours, and the results were pretty surprising. Not only did the Reolink not experience any kind of delay compared to Blue Iris, but Unify Protect was by far the worst in this category. Not only did Unify Protect automatically log me out every four to five hours, but it also had the largest delay out of all the cameras, which was about two seconds of total lag time. Second, if you know when an event occurred, you can access the footage from that specific time and then export the clips for law enforcement. When it comes to actually exporting the clips, the Blue Iris system works the best in most cases. When exporting a clip in the Blue Iris PC software, you select a clip and then you drag the crop icons to the beginning and end of your desired clip. Right click and then choose export. You can select all kinds of different export qualities and methods, and as usual, the Blue Iris interface offers you so much customization that it can be pretty overwhelming. The good news is if you just leave everything on default for the export zero profile, you end up with a pretty good result. The Unify Protect system is similar and you've got a few options. You can either download entire clips from the events window, or from the timeline interface, you can select the beginning and ending of each exported clip. Unfortunately, in my testing, the clip selection was pretty buggy, and it's definitely not as easy to find the beginning and end of your clip as it is in Blue Iris. From the desktop app of the Reolink NVR, you can only download entire video files, so you're stuck downloading an hour of video anytime you want to grab a single event. Using the web interface, you can download clips of up to five minutes, but there's no good way to preview the start and end points, so you just have to kind of blindly select a range and hope that the clip that you want is in there. Even worse, the only way to filter your videos based on AI and vehicle detection is to use the Reolink mobile app, which does work great, but I'd really like to see Reolink spend some time developing their web interface and PC apps to make them on the same level as the mobile app. And last, the least typical use case of security systems is for someone who may want to go back and comb through all the person and vehicle detections every day at the end of the day. For this case, the Unify Protect system has the best layout, where you can quickly see smart detections from any of your G4 series cameras right from the landing page of the NVR web interface. You can also filter those smart detections by just people, just cars, or both. The smart detection screen goes one step further, giving you a zoomed in thumbnail of whatever it detected, so you can see the faces of people and the type of car without actually having to watch the video clip. This feature, which was added to Unify Protect just a few months ago, was executed really well and is the best part of the Unify Protect system. But like I said, it's only available on Unify's G4 line of cameras. Blue Iris recently added direct integration of DeepStack AI detection. And as of right now, I'm running some of my cameras on the new system, some with the old system, and some with both for comparison purposes. In the old system using AI tool, there was no way of filtering the alerts on your phone or web browser but you did get a very powerful browsing experience with filters and details in the actual AI tool software. The new DeepStack integration shows what kind of object was detected and the confidence level of that detection right on the clip description in the PC app and web interface, but for some reason it's not available in the mobile app yet. I'll be doing a full setup on that next week, but I wanted to give the Blue Iris developers just a little more time to get things ironed out. Last in this category, the Reolink AI person and vehicle detection is only available in the mobile app for some reason. You can filter by all AI-based events, just people, or just vehicles, but you have to click on each event to see what that actually was, and there's no preview like there is in Blue Iris or Unify Protect. I'd call the Reolink system workable, but definitely not great. In this last use case, I'm gonna give the win to Unify Protect, but I have a feeling that Blue Iris is gonna be on par or better within just a few weeks of additional development. 
Next, let's talk about privacy. And let me just put this out there. If you're gonna make a comment below about how Reolink can't be trusted because they're a Chinese company, let me just stop you there. You shouldn't be blindly trusting any company. I don't care what nationality. I don't care if they have an office space in the US or a friendly sounding name. Blindly trusting companies to keep your data safe and protect your privacy is a bad plan, period. Also, trusting yourself to keep your data private might also be a bad plan if you don't really know what you're doing. When viewing your cameras remotely, your phone is gonna to need to establish a connection to your NVR, which is located inside of your house, inside your home network. There are a few ways to accomplish this. The least secure way, in my opinion, is to do port forwarding of your NVR so that it's directly exposed to the internet. This allows anyone who scans your IP for open ports to detect that you have a port forwarded NVR, and if your NVR has any vulnerabilities, exploits, or weak credentials that could be used as an entry point into your network. The second option is called P2P, which uses a cloud server to connect your NVR to your phone. A P2P system is not an inherent security risk, but it does require you to trust the company that's running the P2P server, which I mentioned is generally a pretty bad plan. The third and best option is to set up a personal VPN. A VPN works by establishing a secure tunnel between your mobile device and your home network. All data that gets passed through a VPN tunnel appears to be originating from inside the network and therefore doesn't need any port forwarding since it's going to use the local IP address of your NVR to access it. The Reolink NVR and app will work with all three connection types, including VPN. You can see here that when I turn off my Wi-Fi, I can't access the NVR, but after connecting to my VPN, I can use it just as if I was on my local network. Blue Iris works with either port forwarding or a VPN, but they don't run their own P2P server. They do, however, have a dynamic DNS type solution where you can use the Blue Iris license key to look up your home IP address with the app, but it still requires port forwarding, which, like I said, I don't really recommend. Easily in last place in this category is Unify Protect, which only works with their P2P cloud login service. I have no idea why Unify Protect app can't work locally, but it's infuriating. If my VPN is running on a Dream Machine Pro, why can't I access the cameras that are also running on my Dream Machine Pro? It doesn't make any sense and Unify needs to fix this immediately. It is inexcusable. And that leads me to my final thoughts. I just don't know how anyone can justify the price of Unify Protect. Does it work? Sure, but it costs astronomically more than the other systems, it ties you to a specific ecosystem of cameras which significantly limits your selection, and it doesn't allow for the simplest of things like VPN local connectivity. I don't know, if you're a Unify Protect user, let me know if I'm missing something here. On the other end of the spectrum, if you want a simple, expandable, plug-and-play system with AI person detection, can you really do better than the Reolink system? I'm not really sure you can. The cameras are high quality and the NVR offers great performance right out of the box without any extra work on your part. The entire package costs $475 and can be expanded to 8 cameras for less than $200 more. Sure, it's not as customizable or accurate as the Blue Iris system or even the Unify Protect system, but it's so cheap and it's so easy. Unless you're looking to tinker or you're what people call a power user, then the Reolink system is probably your best bet. For that last category of users, the tinkerers and power users, Blue Iris just can't be beat. If you already have a home server, then the $69 that you'll spend for a Blue Iris license is gonna be the best money you've ever spent on a surveillance system. If you don't have a home server and you consider yourself a power user, it might be time to look into getting one and exploring all the different services that you can run on your home network. If you're looking for a setup guide for Blue Iris from scratch, stay tuned for my next video, which is gonna be a full walkthrough of that process. Thank you so much to my awesome patrons over at Patreon for your continued support of my channel. If you're interested in supporting my channel, please check out the links down in the description. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that thumbs up button and consider subscribing. And as always, thanks for watching The Hookup.